Hey everyone, Sirdar here. In this episode of Dev with Sirdar, we're going to look at a powerful substitute for a common but not very flexible way that many developers debug Python programs. One of the first ways people learn to debug Python programs is with the lowly print statement. It's handy to just throw a print into a function somewhere to see if a value is what you expect it to be. It's also messy and awkward and amateurish. But for all its downsides, using print is still super useful to just be able to see what something is at a given point in your program without needing the debugger. So enter PySnooper. It's a Python library that lets you display the values of variables in a given context, like a function or a block of code. You get feedback at each line of code executed about the state of every variable in your local context. It's a lot more flexible and powerful than throwing print statements all over the place. Let's look at an example. In this code, I have a function, add random, that takes a starting number, iterates through it a given number of times, and at each iteration adds some random number up to a maximum we supply. If I just run this program as is, all I get is the return value. Now if I add the snoop decorator from PySnooper, I can get an immense amount of detail about what's going on inside the function. First, at the entry point for the function, I get information about all the starting values for all the variables in the function. For each line of code executed, I get details about what local variables have changed. And at the end of the function, I get the return value for the function. So this way we can inspect the behavior of the function in great detail by just decorating it. We can also write this report out to a file if we want, or we could have multiple decorated functions writing out to multiple files. We also don't have to just inspect functions either. We can also inspect arbitrary blocks of code by using the snoop decorator as a context manager. In this second example, I have a function that takes in a starting value, adds it to a list, then adds a number of random values to it. And then we take that list, increment each item in it by one, and get the sum of the items in the list. Now, I don't want to inspect the entire function, especially not this loop here, because that's just going to give us noise. I only want information about this last block here, these two lines. So I'm going to wrap those in a with block using the snoop decorator as our context manager. And if I run this code, you'll see that we get information about all the local values, but only at the beginning of that block. And we only get information about changes to values inside that block. We don't get changes anywhere else in the function, so our report is more focused. Here's another convenience that PySnooper can give you. If you have code in your code base instrumented with PySnooper, and you don't want to run around and manually disable all the places where it's used, you can disable PySnooper unilaterally by just setting an environment variable. This script here is a copy of the previous one, and if I run it, I get PySnooper feedback about a block of code in it. But if we use os.environ to set this environment variable, normally we would do this by just setting environment variables and whatever we use to control the environment for the program we run in. Um, if we set this environment variable, then PySnooper is disabled. So when we rerun the code, there is no feedback. So this way you can toggle PySnooper on or off without having to touch your code base directly. So to sum up, PySnooper lets you decorate your code to get live information about changes to the state of variables without having to throw print all over the place. It works with functions or with arbitrary blocks of code as a decorator. And you can toggle it off for production code with a simple environment variable setting. And that's it for this episode. If you liked it, leave a comment below. And don't forget to follow Devit Sirdar and InfoWorld on Facebook, YouTube, and InfoWorld.com.